So I'm gonna answer this from a scientific point of view. I have a lot of women reach out to me, a lot of women asking me questions. And I've noticed this probably in the last four or five years. They'll tell me, hey, I've got really high cortisol levels and I don't know what to do. And my answer is, well, did you get your cortisol levels tested? Like, what are your values? And they've never actually gotten them tested. So I would, I would question, how do you know your cortisol levels are high if you've never had them tested? Plus, when you look at the biochemical response in the body to exercise, you want cortisol levels to go higher. That is a natural response to exercise. Now, what we don't want is chronically high levels of cortisol. That is how I work through that. I think a lot of people are fearful of high cortisol levels when it might not actually be a physiological occurrence for them. At least they're not able to document it with, with, with evidence. Got it. So some natural spike in cortisol while you're working out in a setting like Orange Theory would be okay. Yes. When I was teaching strength and conditioning, one of the primary signs of an overtrained state was when the body did not increase cortisol in the hours after a workout. That was literally what strength and conditioning researchers would use to identify this athlete may be overtrained because their body is not releasing cortisol. And let me just talk about the physiology of cortisol for a second. Cortisol is released during an exercise bout because cortisol will help break down carbohydrates and we need carbohydrates for energy. And cortisol will also break down fat. So there is a difference between short-term cortisol increase and then chronic levels where they're constantly high.